So, yeah. so Watsyayan asks the question <laughs> that if this is a Shastra and there is a long list of Shastrakaras or specialists uh, before me, then who is the one who first of all generated the Kama Shastra? And according to the ancient universe, the creator of everything, Prajapati or Brahma, he can be the only creator. Whosoever is creating, is creating through his power. So a person may be writing something, producing something, but it is the power, the energy and the prime cause of Brahma. So Prajapati hi Praja Srishtva Tasam Sthiti Nibandhanam Trivargasya Sadhana Madhyananam Shastra Sahasrena Agre Provacha so Agre Provacha, right in the beginning, it is Prajapati who created all Shastras, who created all systems of knowledge. And therefore he created this as well. So he says that he had to create three things on the whole, Dharma, Artha and Kama. So for Dharma, he chose Manu. He transmitted it to Manu. Tasya ek deshikam Manu swayam bhavo dharmadhikaram prathak chakar. And in that tradition, Manu wrote the Dharma Shastra. And after Dharma comes Artha. So who is it that who would write the initial Shastra? of Artha. And he says there was Brihaspati. Brihaspati hi Artha Adhikarika. Now a little comment is needed here. Before the famous Kautilya's Artha Shastra, there existed the Artha Shastra of Brihaspati. That was the older one. So not a Kama Shastra is referring to that Brihaspati. And then he says, as regards Kama, Mahadevanu Anucharaha, that is the disciple of Lord Shiva, Nandi, Sahasren Adhyayanam Prithak Kama Sutram Provach. So the first author to speak on Kama Sutra is Nandi. Nandi the bull, Nandi also is the, uh, Nandi is also considered as actually Tandu, the dancer, the great dancer. Because in Natya Shastra's commentary, Abhinav Gupta makes that comment. He says that Nandi and Tandu, they are one and it's the same name for a disciple of Shiva. So you see, if you look at this whole thing, then in very practical sums, these are systems of knowledge which are created gradually in a civilization. When we look upon these things only as stories, then we tend to think of them as, you know, something story, something fabulous, something unreal, mythos or myth. But that's not the real meaning of the Greek word myth. Myth or muthos in Greek means story. And story tells us many things. So here it is telling us the whole historical process of how knowledge came to be, how knowledge came to be accumulated step by step from one thinker to another, from one generation to another. And then he says that in that same tradition, uh, different sections of Kama Shastra were written. So the first one to write was Audalaki Shweta Ketu. The son of Udalak called Shweta Ketu, he wrote about it and he wrote 
in a very long treatise which was later on condensed and then his text was further elaborated into different sections by another author called Bhavravya. So Bhavravya is also one of the ancestors in the system of Kama Sutra of Vatsyaya. And Bhavravya used to live in Panchal Pradesh. Panchal would be uh, somewhere near Uttar Pradesh, you know, Bareilly, etc. This is the region of Panchal. So it's described from where did this Acharya come? And later on we'll have references of uh, women of Panchal and what exactly they like in uh, sexual activity. Then there was a request from the courtesans of Pataliputra, the present day Patna. And the request was granted by somebody called Datta and he wrote a whole chapter on the life of the courtesans. So the life of the courtesans was described by another Acharya. Then there was an Acharya called Charayan, another called Suvarnanav. Suvarnanav is the Acharya who gave this long, long list of sexual postures by which then there was an Acharya called Ghotak Mukha and he specialized in how to approach unmarried women in order to start a married life. Another Acharya called Gonardiya. Gonardiya specialized in telling about how should a citizen live with his wife, with his wedded wife. And Gonika Putra is the one who talked about the mischief of seducing the wives of others. And then there was an Acharya called Kuchumar who talked about beautification, etc. So you can see from Vatsyayan himself that he belongs to a tradition and he inherits the works of so many other specialists. And during the text also, Vatsyayan is constantly saying that this is my, that this is the view of so and so on this particular matter. This is the view, so and so disagrees with him. The third person has another view. And finally, me, Vatsyayan, I am going to sum it up this way. Or I am going to say something entirely different. And this is my view. So the text is constantly talking about plurality of approach. The text is constantly talking about how things have been tried by various people in the past and how they can be done in the best possible manner. Uh, you see, the Shastra in the Indian tradition is a collection of various experiments that have been done in a particular field of knowledge by all kinds of specialists. A Shastra contrary to what we very often think a Shastra is not a series of hard prescriptions that this is how you have to behave, this is how you have to do, this is what we have to, we have told you and you better stick to it. No. Shastra is only an observation on how people do things, what are the best possible ways of doing things, what were the older ways and what are the newer ways. And when you read the Shastras, then you find evidence of this kind of uh, approach constantly there and uh, repeatedly there. So, having established his whole tradition uh, and his acharyas, Vatsyayan is now coming to the core issue, the issue as to what is karma. He says, we are talking about dharma, we are talking about artha, but let me first define what is karma. What is it essentially? How am I going to approach the subject? And what is it that I will elaborate on? So he says that karma 
is vishayeshu anukulyataha and it is pravritti that is shotri tvak chakshu jivva granaanam atma samyuktena manas adhishthitanam sveshu sveshu vishayeshu anukulyataha pravritti kama so this desire kama is something which is spurred by the senses the sense of hearing the sense of touching the sense of seeing etc all the five senses when they come under the influence of the mind when they make up a message to the mind and where the mind is the coordinator the adhishthata the one who puts all the sensory reports together and assesses them then that desire is called karma in plain language he wants to tell us that it is the world of sensory gratifying sensual gratification so it is at that level that he is going to deal with it and we have to understand that because he is not talking about the sensual enjoyment of arts although the arts become very important in kama sutra and we'll talk about that but primarily he is talking about the physical enjoyment the senses as they seek their enjoyment and that is he says that it is the sense of touch uh, etc etc and that is what is karma he goes on next to of course there are many things in between but he goes on next to the question that why is a study a formal study of karma necessary why is it that we need uh, a karma shastra uh, is it is karma not something very natural is karma not something which comes to even animals so why is it that uh, a whole shastra is needed what is so special about it he says that tiriyak yonishu api swayam pravrittvat kamasya nityatvat na shastre na kritya iti kechit acharya he says that there are some people who says that look even animals indulge in sex they are fine with it they have their life they don't miss anything so why is it that for human beings you need a shastra what is so special with human beings and here here watsyan makes a very important distinction and he says that samprayoga paradhinatvat स्त्री पुंस पौरुषा पौरुषा उपाया उपायम अपेक्षते। He says that for men and women, this whole business of just doing sex naturally will not do, because they need men and women they need a formal उपाया, and उपाया here means that they need a considered method of doing things. they cannot do it without thinking they cannot do it without analyzing they cannot do it without practicing because they have their own constraints and they have their constraints which the animals do not have the human beings are constrained by so many things there is a paradhinatva there is a dependence in them on a large number of things and it is in order to take care of those things upaya pratipatti hi kam sutrat iti vatsyayana vatsyayana says that it is because of upaya you need special assistance in order to satisfy human sexual desire fully 
it cannot be equated it cannot be treated just the same way as is treated by animals of course he makes a very uh, simple observation that animals have their own season and they function according to season uh, they are dependent on certain things but their idea their sexual life is not governed by so many factors as the human uh, life is governed so that is the reason why you need to know and you need to know that sexuality is something which uh, cannot be just taken for granted you need a particular education you need an initiation into sexuality now this whole idea that you need a initiation into sexuality is very important now as one can see that uh, for human beings it is a matter of uh, behaving in a given society that's why right in the beginning he says that uh, for human beings it's not like animals because animals don't have a whole social system an intricate social system around them whereas the human beings have them and this system he defines in terms of three work the sexuality is one work dharma artha kam kama is one sexual desire is one it cannot be something which will be divorced of social concerns it is not something which will be divorced of spiritual concern it will not be something divorced of concerns uh, in which the in which the well being of others is also ensured so he says that out of the three purusharthas dharma artha kama and moksha kama is always to be satisfied in relationship to dharma in relationship to artha it's within the context of these three that you have to make a choice and he says does that apply just to kama he says no that principle applies to dharma also if you have undertaken a dharmic task then you are also going to see yeah is there a is there a break uh uh 